It is with joy that we greet the entire church and you who visit us with the peace of the Lord Jesus. We will meditate tonight in the first book of Kings, chapter 19. We're going to read from the verse 4. First Kings 19, from verse 4. Blessed be the name of our Lord. Let's read. Thus says the word of the Lord. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a broom tree. And he prayed that he might die and said, It is enough. Now, Lord, take my life, for I am no better than my father's. Then, as he lay and slept under a broom tree, suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, Arise and eat. Then he looked, and there by his head was a cake baked on coals in a jar of water. So he ate and drank and lay down again. And the angel of the Lord came back the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for you. So he arose and ate and drank, and he went in the strength of that food forty days and forty nights, as far as Horeb, the mountain of God. And there he went into a cave and spent the night in that place. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, and he said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? Until this point, let us close our eyes and pray to the Lord so that he may bless us. Lord Father, continue operating what you have already begun before we could have imagined. Lord, your presence may be felt in this place, real, from the moment we were arrived. We want to hear your voice and meditate on your word. We want to know you better, Lord. We want to love you more. Lord, speak with us according to our personal necessity. And as a church, we want to be replenished by you, our lamp, our soul, in the name of Jesus. Amen. The church may sit down. We're here reading about about someone biblical who who had many spiritual encounters with God. Elijah was a prophet full of the Holy Spirit. He was extremely used by the Lord of that very of various ways. And a little bit before the text that we read, we saw Elijah who was who was not scared he was there were 400 men who, who were there against him and they challenged him and there was a big thing to see who was the real God and Elijah, he served the same God that we did, and he made, and the Lord made fire from the heavens come down to reveal that only the Lord is God. In that moment there, a moment of a lot of nervousness, in a moment of a challenge in which lives were in danger. Elijah was there, and he was that servant who wanted the challenge, and he won for the glory of the Lord. The presence of the Lord was manifested, and the glory of God was there for all. And they could all understand that there is no other God other than our God. And that is why we serve this God. 
because it is a God that responds with fire, and responds with power. Even going through so many experiences, Elijah entered and entered in a, in a spiritual coldness. And many times he had many experiences, but then he let himself go because there was a woman who has a bad queen, Jezebel, and she told Elijah that the same way that happened to all of those guys that were death because of this, that, that I will do the same to you. It was something that no one expected. And when Elijah heard this, these circumstances, it made him made him weak. And then how and then we could say how he just came from such a profound experience. But then the Bible shows that we are human and we can fail like just like any other people any other person. We cannot look at Elijah and the prophets and the heroes and we think and we should think that they are different from us. The only difference is that in the moment in which they heard the voice of the Lord, they were winners. In the moment that they walked in the Lord's presence, they walked. In the time that they didn't look at the circumstances, the name of the Lord was seen. Elijah becomes weak, and so he starts walking and he stops at a tree, under a tree and he has to die. Brethren, at any time of the walk of the servant, this could happen. In our mind, he needs to be with the things of the Lord. And this should be very clear here. Elijah had powerful experiences, great experiences, but he let his mind become weak. He let his mind go away from the Lord. And he looked at himself, victimizing himself as a victim. The world said bad things, and sometimes any of us, we listen, and that is where it is bad. For anyone who serves the Lord, even having great experiences, there are many here that that came to this work a very long time ago and in the beginning the first love gives us such an energy and we want to serve the Lord they stop doing everything and all they're gonna do is serve the Lord Jesus coming I'm not gonna do anything else and time keeps going and we keep getting involved in the world and then at any time any of us, this could happen. The first tree that we see, we want to sit down. We want to accommodate ourselves. This tree, it represents the me. Our lives as men, before meeting the Lord, without having any experiences, there is no... We had not felt our life. And now we want to accommodate ourselves. But the Lord loves us so much, and that is why we are here, because He loved us first. He brought us here today, and He has already blessed us, and He will bless us even more. And the Lord sent an angel to alert Elijah. And He sent the angel, and when and then Elijah said to him, Arise and eat. The Lord is saying that to me and you tonight. Maybe some of some people have came here tonight and you feel like this. You feel like Elijah in the hard part of his walk. If you feel like Elijah at this time, listen to what the Holy Spirit is saying to you and me. Arise and eat. Arising talks about getting a posture 
in which you are not comfortable. When you're comfortable, you're lying down, you're in the position of almost of a sleeping person in which we are worried about what is around us and the word of the Lord is exactly the opposite arise he is taking us by the hand tonight and he is picking us up but not just to arise but arise and eat tonight there is a banquet here Many have already received their portion. They already feel fulfilled. Others received it when the children sang. Others received when a song and, and a phrase in which it, the Holy Spirit talked to you and now you're in noon. And then there are some that have not taken their portion yet, but there's still time. Because Without the food that the Lord has for us, we cannot walk. And that is why the church is always here constantly. And that is why the world does not understand. Sometimes they call us fanatics. But we know the importance of being here. This morning, there was a banquet. There was eight people, and they were served. And I have the certainty that everyone loved, and they were and they and they were and they were blessed and look at how the angel spoke to Elijah he said arise and eat and he saw a cake baked on coals and a jar of water so he ate and drank and then again he still laid down again so you see that our nature we have a tendency of even seeing the power of the Lord even experimenting his grace even receiving the food we we have that inclination of going back and accommodating ourselves and so i'd like to make a parenthesis here in a long walk serving the lord it is very very normal that we live of old experiences you became a Christian and you have an experience with the Lord and when you became a Christian you had a signal or you saw something and then you're still with that experience and you don't ask for new experiences and that makes us lay down again always in our walk we will encounter this they will come when we have something going on with our family, something physical going on, others will come out and look, come in our way. And our tendency will be that here I will stop. It is enough. But the angel of the Lord, he will come. Because a family member of church will be praying for you in an early dawn, in a service, at night, at any moment. Someone remembers us. There is a church that always remembers. And an angel will be sent. And the bread will be offered and a jar of water so that you may arise. And the word says that the second time that the angel called, he arose and the food that was there was enough for his walk of 40 days and 40 nights as far as her ride. and so we saw that and every time that the bible talks about a walk of one day it is it talks about our time and our walk our notion what we think is victory of the victory and it is something little that we think, oh, I should do this. A lot of times we want to be our own Lord. And sometimes that is, this is very difficult. Some people want to do their own thing. One day is the way of man. That is what I think. If I was in this situation, I would have done something different. I don't agree with this. Oh, maybe, you know, I think it should have been done another way. But really, the walk of one day, it only takes us to a tree and makes us want to lay down, makes us want to give up, and makes us want to sleep spiritually. And the Bible talks about this, about us sleeping. 
It says the weak are the ones that sleep. Because every time that we want to sleep, we become weak. But as we listen to the voice of the angel, we arise and we eat. And the Lord makes us happy. And we can go through anything. The walk of one day came and Elijah noticed that he would not be able to. He, he was alerted by the angel. He arose and he ate. And then he had the strength of a walk of 40 days and 40 nights. And so maybe you are here tonight. You could be going through something that you say, Lord, what is this? What is going on? What, what is this situation? What affliction? My soul is in anguish. But know that you, you have ate now. And then now you know that whatever Whatever you're going through, you will get through it. During the day, there will be a cloud over you, and at night, there will be a fire next to you. And nothing will, will you need. But like I said, we are human, and our tendency is to become weak. And so Elijah got to the mountain, and he went into the cave. We are the ones that we look the most like Elijah. Another circumstance, there was not the same, the same thing in which he thought he maybe was going to die, but he was just weak. He had sat down twice and gotten up twice, and he had walked 40 days and 40 nights, and he arrives and he gets to something in which his eyes was comfortable, a cave. The cave is the op The cave resemble resembles the opposite in which the Lord wants for us. There is no light. There is no condition in, there are no condition to live in. A cave has all the characteristics of something that we can use in the message tonight, which is depression that the world tries to send to us. Not something psychological, but something spiritual. Sometimes we we are through a battle and we get very close and when we want to be isolated when we think we are the owners of the situation we go into the darkness and we can't see the light of the Lord and we can't see the revelation of the Lord and we become without breath and we go into a situation that is exactly the opposite of what Jesus promised us I came so that you may have life and abundant life and so the Lord again calls Elijah does the brethren see that the Lord does not give up on us just like he didn't give up on Elijah glory to Jesus that he does not give up on us and he calls him again and he asked him a question and he wants to ask me and you this question what are you doing here the Lord asked twice to Elijah what are you doing here and the question that the Lord asked me and you tonight is this one what are you doing here tonight what are you doing when you are distant from the Lord what goes through your head you no know, I had many experiences you know, five years ago, ten years ago, my family went through this, my neighbors, I saw this, I've seen dead being resurrected, all in the past. And you say it, but it doesn't seem like you think it could happen again. You, you tell your stories like it is a history class. That experience, you, you say it with sadness almost. You don't say it with happiness, oh, I saw this experience, but last week I had a similar experience. That is what the Lord wants to do with me and you. He wants the experience to be fresh, which is, got up tonight, ate, drank, walked, lay down again, arise, eat, walk again, but not to go into a cave. So. When the Lord asks us a question, it is not to humiliate us. It is not. The world says, what are you doing here? 
I didn't see you at church. There's no worse question that you can ask someone who hasn't been at church. You're almost telling the person to not come here anymore. Sometimes a person doesn't come to the service a few days. Give them peace of the Lord. Give them a hug. Tell them with love that they are a part of this. But don't, don't, go, don't go asking them why they're why here. The Holy Spirit asks, what are you doing here? Because he wants you to be in the plan. Me and you, in which we are in the project of the Lord, in which we are inside of what the Lord called us for. And we see that Elijah used very various excuses, saying, Lord, I work for you, I'm poor. There are excuses and arguments that the Lord does not want to hear. That is not what the Lord wanted to hear. When Elijah used this argument, the Lord didn't even wait for him to didn't even wait for him to finish. And he said, Elijah, you think you think that you're the last one? I'm the one that survived. And now I ask I ask that you take me because I can't take it anymore. And then the Lord said, You think you are alone? There are seven thousand that did not bow down to Baal. And so we need to leave here tonight feeling like the 7,000, not weak, but as winners, taking the word that one day saved us. Before we were, we were defeated and we were going the wrong way, but now the Lord has brought us to the way of life. That is the expression that the Lord wants to hear from us tonight, and me and you. We need to be where Jesus is, be where the Lord is, be where the Lord call us for. Close your eyes. And like, like what was said, like what was said, take what is here for you. Brethren, when we we'll talk about the bread and it is very hot and it is being made this brings us life the Lord wants you to leave strong he wants you to leave with your head held high saying only the Lord is God and he is the Lord that can resolve all your problems Graças a Deus. O banquete continua. Se você tiver fé, feche seus olhos e você vai ver os anjos do Senhor passeando. Close your eyes and you will see the angels. Aleluia. Serving us here today. Glory to Jesus. sair daqui fortalecido pela graça, pela misericórdia do Senhor aleluia
want to do? Glory to Jesus. At the moment of the king, the Lord said, Elijah, leave there, because this is not your place. And we need to listen to this voice, this question, and leave. Do not wait till tomorrow. Jesus can return right now, tonight, in the middle of the night. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the time of the blessing. When Elijah left, the Lord wanted to present himself. And so a very strong wind came. And then there was another wind and there was an earthquake. But the Lord was not there. And so the Holy Spirit is the only one that convinces us that we need a change. There was no loud music or someone that yells very loud. There was nothing that will convince us, convince us that we need to change. The Lord only revealed in a delicate voice. The Holy Spirit is a gentleman. He is gentle. He doesn't just kick the door open. He is at the door and he knocks. If you hear and you open the door, I will be with you. And we await the Lord. So listen to the voice of the Lord tonight. The Lord talked to a man, to a woman. The Lord promised victory. He, pro he said that there will be victories. He said you are, you are called. Even if you are being told differently, listen only to the Lord. Because the Lord, because the Lord is here for you tonight. Glory to Jesus. There was a servant that during the prophetic service he said, My son, you are mine and not the world's. This is a marvelous word. The Lord is telling someone tonight that the world trying to convince him that he is not from the Lord with attitudes and with words, and maybe family members, someone. Someone tried to take him away from the ways of the Lord and telling you that you do not belong to the Lord, you belong to the world. But the Lord says, no, it is a lie. You are mine. You are my son. 
I am your father. You are part of me. And so take this blessing. And she said to a woman, I heard your prayer. Before, we did not know this love. We didn't have an experience with anyone that listen we awaited on things of this world and we would not res be responded but now we are we speak to a lord that responds to us and she says my my daughter i am sending an angel and so let's take this blessing it is the song that we sang we are close to answering the heavens elijah was close to answering a new face and he almost lost it because of a tree, because of a cave. What could Jezebel do to Elijah? Because if the Lord didn't give her the power, she would not be able to do nothing. Because our Lord is omnipresent and he knows all. And so these things that Jezebel said, they scared Elijah. But we need to be in the ways of the Lord. And when we are with Him, He asks us, what are you doing here? And He tells us, I don't want you here. I want you somewhere else. I want you with your head held high. And I want you to praise me. Jesus promises us and He tells us that He will do even bigger things than He has done. And after we got the victory, He gave another do you leave other people where you pass do you leave other people to praise the Lord he evangelized with gratitude and with thanks and that is what the Lord wants for us he wants to make us more than victorious and he wants us to take everything that he has for us let's have a word of glorification for everything he has done Lord, we thank you because of how marvelous you are. There is no There is no there are no words for everything uh, everything that you say to us. And this only comes through your Holy Spirit. You gave us away, and you showed us that in you we are more than victorious. We thank you, Lord, for all of the times that we prayed, and you heard us, and you responded to us. We thank you for all the times that we cried in your presence, and you calmed our hearts. Thank you, Lord, for taking care of us. Thank you for your word. Thank you for making your word alive in us. Thank you for giving us security. We know that through this word, the revelation of your spirit is upon us. We thank you for this church. We thank you for the renewal, O oh Lord. We thank you for the angels that were already here tonight since the beginning of this service. Praise be the name of the Lord. We want to tell you that you are the God. You are the only God. You are the God that we love. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. You sent your only son to die on the cross for us. And that is why tonight we are here in this beautiful feast. Celebrating one more time that you are God, the God of our lives. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. Receive this service and take us. In Jesus' name, amen. The church may be seated. We will begin the assistance. If you want a personal assistance, we are at your disposal.